Welcome back to TV48 Update. I'm your host, Catherine Pugh. I'm here with Dr. Gregory Ellis, and we're talking about this whole diet issue, uh, low carbs and the whole thing. But let me just clear something up so that everybody knows. You have your doctorate in physiology from Temple University. Um, you're a certified nutrition specialist, and you've authored several books, all of which we're going to talk about while we're here. And you're here to help me help our audience sort of straighten out this whole thing about carbs, no fat, low fat, what should we be doing? Mm -hmm. So, and you were talking about the pasta. Well, one of the yeah, other... I was asking about pasta yeah. because it, as many people out there know, I'm a runner and I used to eat a lot of spaghetti, especially the night before mm -hmm. running um, because they said, you know, carbohydrate pasta helps you, um, you know, mm -hmm. gives you the energy to run in the morning. And none of that's true. Messed up. Now, I wrote, I wrote all about that in this book. That's this, this is the net carb scam book. So, now, what, this one you just finished. Yeah, I okay. just finished that. Okay, so everybody, okay. So there's two major things going on in there. I'm talking about the net carb scam, which we'll talk about, and I'm also talking about the effect of carbohydrates on the body. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened in science is that for in the early part of the last century, scientists believed that you needed carbohydrates, that carbohydrates provided the fuel for muscle contraction. Right. 100% of the fuel. And that's what we were told as runners. Right. Right. And that's not true. Hmm. So when the information started coming out in science that that wasn't true, mm -hmm. and we began to shift to realize that the body was burning fat as a source of fuel, another thing happened. They found out that in long-term exercise, fat can only provide a small amount of fuel. Hmm. So they emphasized the carbs. And when they fed people carbs, they did better in their performance. But the reason for that is people were used to handling the carbohydrates. They could not process the fat they were eating. Hmm. So it wasn't a function that carbs were better than fat. It was a function if you were adapted to eating carbs, then you could process them better than fat. If you became adapted to eating fat, then you could actually go much longer than if you were eating carbs. But that information really hasn't come out yet. Hmm. We're just on the cusp of that right now. It's probably another 30 years until science knows that. But I cover it all in that book. Okay, because I'm, I'm still sort of confused here. So you're saying we can eat fat. We should eat fat. We should eat That's fat. That's the primary fuel of the body. Okay, fat is the primary fuel right. of the body. We're, all, we're learning this together. Mm -hmm. And carbohydrates... You don't need them at all. But the body will burn what you feed it. Okay. If you feed it carbs, it will burn them because it has to. But it prefers to burn fat. That's the important point. That's that's its preference. Okay, the so, body prefers to burn fat. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about what are, what are the fats? What are the foods that we eat that are fat? Well, now we've got this whole good fat, bad fat thing going on. That's another thing that complicates More confusion. things. Okay? Okay. More confusion. More mm confusion. -hmm. So when fat again got implicated in the heart disease deal, it was animal fat. Right. All right. Now, of course, when we are carbohydrates and we convert them to fat, we're converting them to saturated animal fat. So there's no evidence that saturated fat's bad for you. Mm -hmm. So I eat primarily animal fat, okay. butter, eggs, meat fat, that kind of stuff. They want to tell us that oils are good for us. I try not to eat too many oils. I'll eat some olive oil, but I don't worry about that. But, okay. So that's the big argument out there now. Eat the good fat. Stay away from the bad fat. The bad fat being the meat fat mm -hmm. and the good fat being the vegetable oils and olive oils and those kinds of things. So where do we find our fat? Is that in our proteins and our... our um Fat is in meat products meat primarily. Products. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now we're the, the nation's sort of becoming an unwilling vegetarian, right? Because that's supposed to be the healthy way of eating, mm -hmm. according to our establishment. I disagree with that completely. So you're saying meat is okay? Oh, that's all about all I eat mm -hmm. is meat. Yeah, I think it's great for us. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, I discussed the optimal diet in that book. Ooh, what's the optimal diet? What about fish? Can fish yeah, replace? Yeah, fine. Okay. So what's, what's the optimal diet? Well, in my view, the optimal diet is the one that our body is set up to burn. So, okay. there's again, there's rules to all of this. All I do, is I, I went out and learned the rules. Then I reversed engineer what we're supposed to do once I knew the rules. Okay. And the rules say, first and foremost, the body wants to burn fat as its source of fuel okay. and that it converts carbohydrates into body fat. Okay. And that's... You know, you don't want the you don't want to get yourself fat. Okay, so carbohydrates convert into the fat in our body. That ends up on your yes waistline, and fat does not. Right, and uh, fat, which would be your meats and so mm -hmm. forth, is are the burned fuel, as fuel that's burned. Right, 
Right. Okay. And now, that won't end up on your... And this is why the low-carb diet is becoming popular. People don't know this mm -hmm. because Atkins buffaloed everybody for so many years. Right. The primary pr value of the low-carb diet is that you lose your hunger. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is the fat you're eating stays in your blood, mm -hmm. bathing your tissues with a source of fuel. Mm -hmm. Now they're happy. They don't send a feeding signal to the brain. Okay. Okay. If you so, eat carb and that gets converted into body fat, it's no longer in the blood. Okay. Now what happens? You get hungry. So that feeding signal is sent to the brain and you go eat and you just stored all your fuel as fat, but you go shove some more in. That's why we're getting fatter. We're getting fat in the face of starvation. Hmm. Basic biochemistry. Okay. Now, what about these? And I know we're going to get to the, the perfect diet, but you see a lot of people eating these low-carb bars, me included, these low-carb bars. Good, bad? Bad. Bad. Ooh. This is the net carb scam. $30 billion worth of low-carb foods are in the pipeline right now, mm -hmm. and the food manufacturers have jumped on this low-carb craze. Mm -hmm. So now we have a new thing called good carbs and bad carbs. Okay. And the, the South Beach diet, for example, is based on the idea of good carbs, bad carbs. People mm -hmm. are calling the South Beach diet a low-carb diet. It's not a low-carb diet. Mm -hmm. It's a diet... A diet book. And understand, it's just a diet book. It's not a weight control book. Okay. It's full of mythology. And it's based on good carbs, bad carbs. And that's how we really get into the nonsense because now they're, they're using terms called impact carbs, non-impact carbs. Really confusing. Oh, yeah. Really no, confusing. They don't even know what it means. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying, the good carbs don't impact on your blood sugar and on your insulin, okay. which, of course, is not true. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're gonna, before this is all over, we're all going to really know what we need to be eating and how we should be eating. No carbs, and low carbs. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking with Dr. Ellis, and we're learning about what to do about our bodies. We'll be right back.